An iPhone 4S led to the uncovering of the biggest homicide conspiracy in Zimbabwe. 9 August 2015, police officers at Centenary Police Station received a tip that a man named Richard Paira Manzi was harboring in Andropa. Police being diligent followed up on the lead and brought the man and Garikai Richard John for questioning at the police station. The two men disputed the claims of criminal activities and the police confiscated their phones. Paira Manzi had an iPhone 4 S and John had a Nokia 1600. Paira Manzi then claimed that the iPhone 4S was not his. It had been given to him by John. The police then allowed them to go but then kept the phones for investigation. The police officers seeing the living conditions of the two men did not believe that either one of them could afford an iPhone 4S. So the police officers were suspicious. One of the two phones, the iPhone 4S was out of power so the police charged it but they were not ready for what they would soon discover. When they turned it on it was pretty obvious that the phone did not belong to either one of them because it was full of white people contacts. It did not take long before they managed to pinpoint the original owner of the cell phone. The cell phone belonged to Catherine May Francis, a 35-year-old white woman who had been raped and killed the previous year. Catherine lived at Mujanje Farm in Kuruve with her two parents, Malcolm Stewart Francis and her mother, Annette May Francis. Catherine and her father used to take long walks at sunset to stretch and exercise. On this day, however, they were attacked and robbed of $300, their shoes, their phones, and their clothes. Catherine had also been dragged aside, undressed and raped brutally by one of the men. After the attack, the assailants had fled and left the two for dead. Annette, Catherine's mother, was suspicious when the dog that they had left with named Casey had returned alone and scared. She then contacted her husband's brother Andrew, who lived nearby, and they arranged a search party. They found them half dead, blooded, and rushed them to a hospital in Harare. Unfortunately, Catherine died four days later, and her father, five days later. The police, however, did not find any evidence or traces of the assailants, so the case remained open. So now the police had a lead to the murder of the Francis family. The police then regretted letting these two men go because they could have been the missing piece of this very complicated puzzle. The police could not find these two men again. They had gone into hiding. But after a few weeks, they managed to get a tip off of John's location. He was said to be at his maternal relative's home in Chipiri Farm and they pounced on him at around 3 a.m. so that they could catch him by surprise. The police then found him there and searched his entire room, but they could not find anything. While they were searching the room, he surprised them by bolting out of the room and fleeing half-naked into the forest. He was too quick on his legs, so they could not capture him. Their main suspect had fled again, and this was a big blow to their investigation. However, they noticed that as he was fleeing, he had dropped something, and they discovered that it was a pocket diary. They obviously knew that this was of great importance because why would they try to run away with it? And when they opened it, they found graphic details of their plans to rob white farmers. Due to the contents of the diary, they knew that this was not a one-man gang, that this was a syndicate. In the diary, there was only one other man who was mentioned, but he seemed to be an alias. The name was Musea. The name was not particularly helpful because it seemed like a nickname. They also discovered through the diary that they had attacked another farm named Heroden Farm. They had attacked this farm on Workers' Day in 2011. The owners of the farm were Wendy and De Lafarge and her husband. They killed her husband, but she she survived. They got her to open the safe and they took 15,000 US dollars and other household goods and fled the scene. She had survived the attack, but her husband did not. Neither did Mr. Zitzman and his wife Philippa of another farm. These were already three serious crimes that had been committed by John and his accomplices. They also found out through the diary that on the 2nd of October in 2011, they had attacked Robert Glendin Evan and his wife. They ambushed him outside his house and left him for dead. They stole 5,000 US dollars together with other household goods. He was in hospital for six months until his death on the 10th of April 2012. The police also discovered that they were responsible for the attack on Robert Bennett Masterson, who had been hit twice on the head with a war, but only survived because he managed to unmask one of the assailants and they panicked and fled. Seeing the graphic nature of the crimes committed by John and his accomplices, the police 
police were more than determined to bring justice to these families. They decided to do a deep dive into who Muzea was. They sent a memo to all police stations around Centenary and Gurue. After a few weeks, a police officer from another police station managed to recognize the name Muzea. As the police had initially anticipated, this was not a real name. It was an alias. His real name was Kiribon Jirimudenga. The most unbelievable thing was that this man was a responsible family man according to his community. Church services were even being conducted at his house. That's how respected the man was. A church man being involved in Hina's crimes? Well, police officers have had their fair share of hypocrites, so they were not deterred by his reputation. His family and neighbors knew him as a cross-border trader. He would cross to Mozambique and order bells and come back to Zimbabwe and sell them. He was so brilliant at hiding his real work to an extent that he would even travel up to the Mozambican border and get his passport passport stamp so that he could prevent all suspicion. When the police managed to capture him, they found some of the stolen goods. He would sell the sheets, pillows, and even blankets that he would ransack from the white farmer's homes. After intense interrogation, he led them to another member of their gang. His name was Das Meta Vore. His name was Das Meta Vore. Das Meta had indeed proved that your crime does matter. He was in possession of a gun that had been stolen from Mr. and Miss Alvin and he had buried it next to his house. The police now had two members of the gang and they had no sights on John. He kept evading the police but they finally got a tip that he was in Vorwe. Somehow John knew that they were looking for him and he managed to hide behind a house. He saw the police with dogs looking for him as he was hiding behind the house but he also saw another man that was in civilian clothes that was walking together with the police. He assumed that this man was a civilian who was sending him out. So as soon as the police left, he went after that man and threatened him for sending him out to the police. What he did not know was this man was not a civilian, he was a detective. The detective did not reveal his true identity to John because he wanted number one to make sure that it was really him, number two he wanted to figure out where he lived and he did not want to lose him again. He managed to locate him at number 996 Majawi location in Vorwe as he was brushing his teeth in the morning. He then called for reinforcement and they managed to apprehend him. Finally, four years of anarchy in Gurue and Centenary had been brought to an end. They were finally brought to court to answer for all their crimes and High Court Judge Justice Tapiwa Chitapi found them guilty on all counts and sentenced them to death in June of 2018. They are currently serving their sentence at Chikurubi Maximum Prison since the death penalty was abolished. They tried to appeal but all the appeals were rejected by the court. We learn from this case that it's better to be poor with a little than to be rich by blood. May the souls of their victims rest